previously on Soda 360. Summit's on the air with the Ham Ninja. Okay, I can't do this anymore. I gotta come clean with you. You know what? You've been getting ripped off. So for the past year or more, you've only been seeing a part of soda. I haven't showed you the whole thing. I feel like you're kind of getting ripped off by me, maybe some of the other bloggers too. Hey, look, we're showing you maybe the most glamorous, maybe the most interesting part. Hiking, great views, um, getting on the radio, making contacts all over the world. But uh, you've been getting cheated out of how do we plan this stuff? So what is it? So I've decided to start a new series called Soda 360. I'm really excited to get this thing going because what I'll do is I'll go a little bit of an intro. What the heck is soda? Why do we do it, etc. Talk a little bit about prominence, what makes a soda peak. Some of the things that you've been missing on all these other videos which is, you know, maybe like any other traveling video. So we'll talk specifically about summits on the air and ham radio in this episode. In these episodes, actually. So we'll start off with a couple of uh, videos on planning, intro and planning. Uh, then we'll talk about how to get there. That's not too hard. We got GPS, charts, and some other things. Um, we'll go through the setup of my station and how I do it. Uh, spotting, how I do that, what the heck is spotting, why do it, and then maybe activate a peak, definitely activate a peak. Um, we'll use sideband, hopefully uh, some CW, we'll chase some other guys on summits, and uh, so we'll do that, pack it all up, certainly want to get home safely, and then at the end, there's a little bit of paperwork to be done, how do we finish this thing off? So we'll talk a little bit about how I get the my logs, my, from my logging program, uploaded to the SOTA website to get my points. Um, I downloaded it onto my computer and some other things. So we'll go over all those things. It's kind of more of a 360 look at SOTA rather than just that one little picture. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. Okay, so we're at SOTA 360 video series part three. So we covered in Part one intro, uh, did a little bit of planning. Uh, we looked at uh, choosing a summit and weather and what to bring. Part two, we covered choose a hiking spot, how to get there. Uh, worked a lot with uh, charts, etc. So we talked about how to how to find uh, the peaks and how to put those into a chart that you can take with you. Uh, so we're now we're up to part three and uh, the part you've probably all been waiting for, which is the activating part, we will be doing uh, a reference activation. Not every activation goes like this, but uh, let's see what happens. We're going to get there, so I'll talk very quickly about how the heck you get to the trailhead. That's pretty darn simple. And uh, then we'll navigate up to the peak. Uh, we'll set up our gear, which is uh, pretty simple. And uh, then we'll do a little bit of spotting here, so we'll talk about that. Uh, if you're running QRP, it's going to be important. Uh, you can do it via the internet, on your phone, uh, APRS message, satellite MS, SMS. You can get help from others. Uh, and if you put out an alert, then uh, when you start calling CQ, the RBN network will actually spot for you. That is really cool and a huge bonus for doing CW. Um, and then, uh, obviously, we'll get up there. We could dial around see if we can get some contacts. Uh, we could just call out and activate, and then we could chase other summits. So that's what we have in store for this episode. So let's get cracking. All right. Well, how do we get there? First, we got to get to the trailhead. So this is the easiest part. It's like going to a restaurant you've never been before. If you remember, during the planning phase, I made a note of the latitude and longitude of the trailhead which is typically right next to a road. If you use Google Maps, Waze, something else, that helps you basically get to a restaurant, you can use it to get to the trailhead most of the time. Just punch that into your GPS. I basically cut and paste that latitude and longitude right into Google Maps, and then I just say, give me directions. That's how hard it is. So, and just like you're going to a restaurant, 
follow the instructions on Google Maps or whatever your navigation program is. That'll get me to the trailhead, and then I can switch over to something like All Trails, which is what I use typically, and uh, go from there. And uh, as you saw from the planning process, we went through and put that together. So, can't wait to get on the road. Let's do this thing. All right, we made it to the trailhead. It's an urban peak right up over there through those trees. So this is a pretty quick trip today. So the pack. All right, yeah, the poles actually. Let's get cracking. All right, let's head up to the trailhead. Got my HT out here and uh, saw that it was turned on in the car. So one more reason to carry an extra spare, uh, extra set of batteries for it. And um, we'll turn this baby on, 146, 520. Um, I monitor that as part of the kind of uh, wilderness protocol, which we can go over to another time. Just listening for other hikers that may be down that have a radio that call out every so often. Also, I have some buddies that know I'm out here, so they may give me a call on the way up. Wonder where the heck I'm at. So, let's get cracking. One other thing I should mention uh, on the way up here is uh, at the trailhead, I tried to remember to start my uh, All Trails recorder. And what that does allows me to uh, post my route that I actually took in case it's uh, significantly different than the one I charted. Um, but the biggest reason is I'm curious as to how many miles I do and what the elevation gain is. If I've done it before, I don't necessarily need to start the recorder. Just need to get up to the mountain and do my thing. So. Just something to think about if you are doing the hobby it's kind of fun to keep track of your summits how many hot miles you've hiked you'd be surprised how much they add up there's our summit pretty rocky um not huge but Definitely some elevation gain there. I bet this baby gets flowing pretty good. A little runoff area that's eroded away a lot of the dirt. This will be our trail. Find that next, I don't know, 50 yards at least. And I want to mention one other thing. So about getting to the peak, I normally chart, for brand new peaks, I chart a path using all trails, which we've gone through. Sometimes I'll use a recording of someone else's. Um, in this case, it's mine. I didn't know about this trail until I came down it one year. So I thought, hey, let me go up that. I always come down. So I brought up an old recording that I had done. You'll see the loop up here in the corner. And uh, so I'm just following that to um, go up the opposite way. So, a coyote poop on this trail. I imagine hunting is good right now. I've seen some massive rabbits running around. Of course, the big ones are good at not getting caught because <laughs> they're still around. Or no? Yeah. How's it going? Good. Beautiful day. Yeah. Hey, coming up to a small saddle here. It drops off the other side. That weighs a small bump with a fill on top to the right path to our summit so let's get it done 
really quiet up here. Uh, it's kind of cool coming up this side of the mountain. You can see that's where we're going. So, uh, birds and what have you up here. Are we there yet? Ooh, darn close. Trying to get to that red, that green thing. You'll notice I took a tiny bit different path. It's actually better. So, shoot, another 25 yards and we'll be sending some cool waves into the atmosphere. Let's get her done. Bars, soda 360. Let's do a 360. Here's the view. What do you think? Great view? Yeah. I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to the clouds we're making. It's cool. We're cool. Yeah. Mount Woodson over there. And uh, Black Mountain right behind us. So we're right in between those two guys. There you go. Part of the Soda 360 is you get a 360. Since I'm not explaining what I'm doing, uh, I'll, ex I'll jump in here and say I set the uh, mast on the ground then uh, taking the guy lines and uh, tying them to a couple of shrubs and then I beat in a, uh, uh, a little pen to hold the other one in. All right, mass is secure. Let's go step two. It's always easier to pull this thing out first. And let's hook up the magic antenna. K6 ARK. And this part, pretty darn simple. This is an awesome antenna. It's a multi band, it's a 9 to 1 unit on the end. And weighs like two ounces so there we go put this thing up in here just friction locks on this so as you can see it goes up pretty darn easy pull the pull them to where they're just tight enough we won't have a ton of downforce on it so unless something unexpected happens which with me, that's always the case. All right, our mass is up into the sky. Got our wire hanging there. We're gonna walk over to the station, plug it in and get crack and actually set up a little counterpoise that's hooked to it. So let's do that. Okay, now that I have it hooked up to the station, which is sitting in an absolutely perfect place and getting better at guessing how long this is going to be. I'm going to just run the counterpoise out um, off this guy. Next thing I'm going to do is get my keyer out because uh, I may start out on CW. See if I can't get some contacts there. Um, might be able to get some local contacts on VHF. Then I'll go to sideband, use the uh, voice portion of the band, and uh, see what I can get there, maybe on 20 meters. So we'll hook this up and give it a little test and uh, make sure this guy's working. I will also be setting up my headphones so I can use Vox. It gives me the ability to do hands-free. This video brought to you by K6ARK, the maker of fine antennas, the one I'm currently using. And this cool thing, which you're about to see, is awesome. The number of times that I have dropped my uh, cell phone has gone to zero now on a peak because of Adam and <laughs> his handy dandy cell phone strap. So, holds my iPhone on there. All right, because that's what I use for logging. One last item, you know, I'm going to plug in some external power, although I don't need it. The KX2 has a uh, unit on it. This just makes charging up. I can do multiple peaks with this thing 
and be a lot easier. We grab my handy dandy. So I don't know if you saw in one of my previous videos, but I busted it and I broke it pretty bad. These things are pretty cheap and they're light. I decided to go with a single. Let's see how that works out for me. So I'll run the tuner, just tuned up one to one. And uh, I'll spot myself. Let's see, I'll do uh, QRL. Okay, nobody on. So let's go ahead and spot on that. Okay, I'm going to stop right here for just a second and talk about spotting. What the heck is spotting? Well, spotting is basically getting put on a Soda Watch website. So it's sodawatch.org. If you go out there and look at spots, spots are where you have spotted someone on a peak somewhere. So um, you can be put there by any other ham operator who says, hey, I saw this guy here, go get him. Or you can spot yourself uh, and say, hey, I'm at this peak. I'm running, um, th I'm on this frequency running this mode. Why would you want a spot? Well, if you're running QRP, that is low power, typically five watts. I'm running 10 today. Um, you'll want to get on this website so that people who are chasing, those folks that are uh, on another mountaintop or in their home shack, want to find other soda operators, uh, can find you. And this is how they do it. So if you have internet access, or if you have um, APRS on your radio, or uh, a satellite communicator, you can get yourself put, uh, spotted, if you will, uh, an entry made on this website. Um, that's going to make it a lot easier for you to get contacts. <coughs> when I first started, I didn't know that. And, uh, well, there's a, a couple of peaks I think I failed on uh, just because I couldn't get enough contacts. Had I known this, I would have been working a pile up within minutes. And uh, that's actually what happened the first time I spotted myself. Um, I had 20 contacts in just a few minutes, so it's pretty pretty crazy. So that's what spotting is. Uh, that's how I do it. And um, here are a few. Um, my first spot right here is I spotted myself on uh, this peak, Whiskey Six Year Charlie 453, um, on 7.077 megahertz, and uh, the mode was CW. So a lot of operators, once they saw this, they came and and uh, started calling me as soon as they hear, heard me uh, call CQ. So let's get back to the activation. K6HPX. Okay, I got another one, the KU7 sounds like.
Lima Charlie. November 1, Charlie, Lima Charlie. This is Whiskey 6, Romeo Whiskey Sierra. Whiskey 6, Romeo Whiskey Sierra. Um, got you 5 9 full quieting up here, dude. Awesome, where you at? I'm up on Twin Peaks. Uh, where are you at? I'm at my casa in Escondido. Did you already uh, pack up your HF rig? Uh, negative. I still have it out. I was on 40, um, just switching over to 20, goofing around up here, switching batteries in the camera. Um, you know, the, the quality, it, I swear you were using a Yaesu. It sounds so good. I am using the Yaesu. <laughs> okay, well, this is how you get a VHF contact. I got you on video right now as part of my uh, Soda 360 series. So, uh, folks, this is how you do an activation with uh, uh, VHF Simplex. I got W6RWS here. And I assume you gave me a signal report? You're nice and clear. I want to say uh, full quieting, 5-9. All right, so there's my 5-9. I can count him as a contact. Awesome, dude. Well, your home station's working great. Um, what's the antenna you got on there? Oh, man, quiz time. It's the, um, uh, I think it's the same one you've got. Okay. All right, the Diamond X50. Yeah, perfect, man. So. Um, actually, you should be able to get to my place in uh, Penasquitos. We'll have to try that later. But uh, did you want to try a little CW? Yeah, first uh, CW contact ever, if I can uh, pull it off. All right, let me drop down to where I was. I was on uh, 7044, if you want to go there. All right, let me see if I can dial it in. Okay, and I was there when W6RWS got his first CW contact. Well done, dude. Oh man, that was rough. <laughs> I know, dude, it's really, it's really hard. You, you saw me just barely hitting it, so, uh, but yeah, we got it done, dude. We uh, we got through it, and you got a Kiso, and you're coming in your 5.9 now. I don't know what you tuned up onto, but it's perfect. All right, so this is the break it down, which is the easy part. I've already wound in the, the uh, antenna, so I'm going to lower this thing, which is pretty darn simple. Let me set the pole down here, <clears throat> so you can just see what I'm doing. We start with the bottom part, and then just lower it. Pretty simple. Yeah, yeah, and the car's 
There we go. That's it. It's retracted. Now all we need to do is pack all this stuff up and uh, get out of Dodge. Okay, we're packed up and uh, ready to head down. Uh, one note on desummiting, statistically more likely to crash and burn, hurt yourself. So, uh, you're tired and uh, also going down is a bit wonky. It's always good to have poles because that keeps from doing a, a, a face plant. So, we'll get cracking here. Off we go. I'm desummiting down the trail here um, so this part of the series is about doing the hiking and activating part so this will serve as our our reference hike kind of like uh, reference architectures and engineering where it's just a pattern really uh, so what did we do today well we went out to uh, got in the car we'd already done our planning and uh um, earlier part of the series <clears throat> and if you remember I always mark the point where the trailhead is or you know where we're gonna park the car and um, then I jot down the latitude and longitude of that point and put it in a log that I have in Evernote you can use anything you want paper make a difference right down the latitude and longitude and uh, then when it's time to get in the car I took that cut and pasted it into Google Maps, and that's how I got to the trailhead. Once there, we un got our gear on and uh, went up the mountain. <clears throat> then we proceed to activate, which is four minimum of four contacts, where you have to at least get their call sign and signal report. Um, we did that using Morse code, CW, also known as CW. We use it synonymously. <clears throat> but we also used a HT, so I had a handy talkie, and uh, I talked to another ham here that I know, Jacob, W6RWS, and um, I contacted uh, another guy in another summit actually up in San Gabriel, so I thought he was local. Turns out uh, he wasn't at the Iron Mountain right next to me, but at the Iron Mountain up in the San Gabriels, and so <clears throat> I'm guessing 60 to 100 miles away from me with a little 5 watt HT, some little antennas on top, which uh, not too bad. Some to some it does really well, so you can get, I've gone over 100 miles just an antenna on my on my uh, HT or walkie talkie. Um, <clears throat> so you can use any mode as I shown. Um, we didn't use sideband today. It was so crowded because of a um, contest that's going on. I couldn't really break through the pileups. I tried, but uh, no good. So I got more than enough on CW when I started out. And I actually could have activated this summit with just my walkie-talkie. So if you just have a technician license, you can do this hobby um, pretty pretty easily. So, we log those. We're going to show you what we do with the logs later in this series. Packed up our gear. Made sure we didn't leave anything behind. Ohana. That actually means don't leave any equipment behind. Um, I've done that and then had to go back up there and get it. That was kind of a bummer. Um, and now we're desummiting, which as I said, is uh, statistically a place where you're most likely to get hurt sliding and slipping um, that's why it's great to have these um, that way if you do trip because you're a little bit top heavy with the backpack on uh, you won't face plant <laughs> they've helped me a couple times although I will say uh, there was a third time that I've managed to face plant anyway so those are, that's always fun So there you go. This is our reference hike or activation. Let's call it our reference activation. Um, so once we get back to the car, then it's just a matter of navigating home and then 
if you can't do that, you got bigger problems. So beautiful day today. And uh, I'd say uh, this particular route, and I'll publish it on the blog, hamninja.com. Uh, is a very easy route to take. It's easier than the other side. Um, there are a lot of kids and families, which is great to share the hiking with those guys. So, perfect weather. All right, that concludes our reference activation for the Soda 360 series. I hope you found this part helpful. Um, and it's typically what you see on uh, videos that I do. But when you see it combined with everything else, the pre-soda and the post-soda, hopefully this will bring it all together for you. So the next part will be, um, what do we do after soda? It's about just getting our logs uploaded and uh, doing a couple of other things that are optional. You would even have to upload your logs if you don't want to. But uh, anyway, 73.